Hello everyone, this is Carlos again with Yasa. I'm here at JPEG with Dragos Stanka. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, the Romanian is getting better and better. <laughs> it's improving. So Dragos, Dragos, I'll, I'll try to make it short. You have a very yeah. long title. Uh, so Dragos is a, a journalist by formation. He's a, sh a shareholder at TDG Group. And he's also the founder and creator of uh, ICF Fest. So Dragos, ICF Fest. IC, ICF Fest. So Directive Central and Eastern Europe. Awesome festival. Thanks, Dragos. We start. Um, a lot of people, you know, you're a big figure here in the Eastern and Central Europe. But would that be nice means also. I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> would be nice. Would be nice also to introduce you to my audience and yeah. give us a, your profile, and then we get to to, to the content and the questions. Yeah, basic. Uh, basically, I'm uh, as you mentioned. I started as a journalist. Then I was switching to marketing and uh, strategy for uh, for some significant media groups here. And since uh, almost 15 years now, I'm. Uh, an entrepreneur in digital uh, media space and uh, uh, agency side and also an ad network. Uh, and I'm also involved in, uh, in uh, this project called the Interactive Central and Eastern Europe, uh, which includes the festival, also a news platform for the industry and the academy, a, a school and also uh, um, a platform with, uh, uh, for sharing the knowledge. On top of that, uh, since since this year, I, I'm more involved in uh, in the biggest uh, uh, lo professional local professional organization that is called BRAT. That means the uh, Romanian Bureau for uh, Transmedia Audit. Basically, what we are doing, we audit uh, the traffic and the data demographics, and we are running a lot of. Uh, studies for radio, for print, and uh, for digital space. So, yeah, the long story short. Nice. I, I want to ask you about IC Fest and what's the story? We're going to be there. Yeah. I think it's uh, something that it seems like super popular here, yeah. you know. Uh. Yeah, we started uh, this project uh, almost 10 years ago. Basically, the initial name was different. We called uh, it uh, Raw New Media, and we realized at some point that none of the elements of the brand were valid anymore. So it's not about Romania, it's not about new media. Everything was uh, changed in only a few years. So starting in 2012, we launched uh, IC Fest, Interactive Central Eastern Europe Festival, uh, that evolved in time uh, in, a, in a complex event with uh, different stages and uh, different content stream, streams. So this year we have uh, uh, nine different content streams. Uh, Creativity and VR, e-commerce and Marcom, uh, retail, fintech, uh, e-health, uh, uh, even entertainment, content and so forth. So basically we've built up a community of experts and professionals that are exchanging ideas. We are trying to, big, to bring all the big guys or the emerging players like uh, Vitex for example to join us and uh, to share the knowledge uh, between what's global and uh, the local industry and the regional industry because uh, almost 40% out of our attendees are uh, from countries that are uh, around Romania. 40%? Almost 40, 37. And how, how many people do you expect for this edition? Uh, for the moment, uh, we expect around 4,000. It uh, depends uh, a lot on the last minute uh, 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 ticket sales. Uh, but roughly 4,000 uh, people. I'm talking about unique individuals. Uh, we don't like the, you know, sometimes in the events industry, it's uh, like uh, the numbers of entries. So you can be four or five persons. I am a fan of uh, accurate numbers. So last year we had 3,860 something people. Very nice. Dragos, uh, you delivered a presentation. I missed it, but I yeah, wanted no to problem. cover a little bit of it because you say that there is life beyond Google and Facebook. And uh, yeah, would my, be main point, my main point was that uh, coming from media industry and the media industry was heavily disrupted by Facebook and, uh, and Google, but mostly Facebook. Uh, my main point uh, here with, with, with an audience formed uh, especially in, uh, by e-commerce players was the fact that they have to take care not to be dependent on uh, only one platform, on uh, only the, uh, the global environment and open platform. And they have to build their own strategies because there are alternatives. We are 
uh, we launched a project Agora in the region, which is like an alternative of uh, Google Display Network, but in a controlled uh, environment. So basically, we have only premium websites that are using premium formats, non-intrusive formats, and also programmatic uh, data and so on and so forth. We launched as an organization at Brat uh, the first. Uh, I'm not aware of anywhere else in the world to be a common marketplace of data done by a professional organization. So basically, there are a lot of private initiatives with uh, uh, alliances between uh, publishers and so on. But in our case, we managed to bring together all the local industry and to create this data management platform common for all the players, even if they are competitors. And uh, we are uh, offering this uh, data to advertisers and so on and so forth. Also, we talked about uh, the content discovery and the Tabula network that is one of our partners in order for the e-commerce players to understand that uh, even if Google and Facebook are offering wonderful and uh, great products, uh, they have to look a little bit into other alternatives, uh, not to cut Google and Facebook, of course, but to add uh, uh, things that can extend their reach, their audience, and uh, improve their sales. Yeah, I think Dar Darren, right? Uh, yeah, Darren. The gentleman from Taboola, he, he was giving a very interesting example on on a, a Razor and you know a company that he found through yeah. Taboola in a sales meeting, actually. You know, that really yeah, the thing is that, uh, for example, Tabula, it's a uh, uh, leading uh, global uh, player that uh, somehow discovered uh, the content discovery, if you want. So basically all the related articles that can be also uh, commercially uh, uh, driven. And that's why Google uh, somehow copied uh, Tabula, Outbrain and other players in this area with Google Mesh content. So there is value in the, in the placements that are related with the state of mind of reading an article. So basically, instead of uh, just clicking on banners or whatever, you can click on uh, related content that is ideally uh, designed for you. So if you are a fan of, I know, a special, uh, I know, you're a man and you're uh, reading a sports article, you can uh, see some uh, running shoes or whatever. So the context also matters in a, in a content-driven way, not display advertising. So yeah, we are uh, searching for alternatives. We are uh, investing in research. We are investing in new formats. We are permanently trying to test and basically use our advantage. What's our advantage as a regional or local players? The advantage is we can move much faster. We don't need to launch a product and scale it up globally. We can launch, test, launch, test, close, launch something new, and we, we are trying to compensate with a, a high a dynamic uh, a strategy. Uh, the fact that uh, we are living in a world that is uh, ruled by Google and Facebook in the advertising yeah, space, yeah. Uh, digital advertising space. You know, I want to take this uh, this last part as a hook to, to, to the article that you yeah. wrote and talk a little bit about ethics yeah. and, you know, in this day and age, the truth about fake news and how, you know, uh, how we got here. Um, it's, it's a long story, but uh, to make it short, basically, um, in my article and in general in my uh, public appearances and so forth, I, I'm, and also at ICFS, at the festival, I, I don't want, uh, I don't especially like, you know, this approach that the, the digital is the solution for everything, the digital is uh, doing only good things and so forth. No, there is a bad thing, there are bad things that are happening right now uh, because of the, this uh, huge explosion of technology. So we, we, I think we as mature people and mature industry, as a mature industry, we need to to look uh, uh, very objective in, in, into 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 what's going on. So, uh, if we are we are talking about what what happening with uh, with uh, this globalization, automa automatization, and so on and so forth, of course, it's uh, scaling up. Scaling up is it's a wonderful thing. But uh, let let me give you an example locally. Uh, in a market like Romania, where the, we don't have New York Times or whatever other media outlet that is very, mm -hmm. I know, inside the DNA of yeah. the local population and so forth, there are only some brands that launch after 1990. When this uh, change came with YouTube, Facebook, and everything, uh, they were completely washed out uh, because of uh, the fact that they couldn't compete uh, uh, properly. And this is affecting the way people are. Uh, are reading the news okay. because what's happening in a programmatic ecosystem? 
everything that is valuable is data and traffic. So basically, if only uh, the traffic and the numbers matters, everybody was running after traffic. Traffic means also fake news, means also clickbait, means also a lot of things. And due to the fact that Google and Facebook doesn't have the visibility at a granular level, and they allowed different tricky websites to yeah. enroll in the instant article program, in Google Display Network program, and so on and so forth, they basically cooperated somehow in, uh, uh, in giving money to those guys that are running only for traffic, for traffic, for traffic. And they dis somehow uh, the traditional or the, the real journalists are harmed and the real uh, uh, media brands are harmed. And this is affecting somehow even the democracy, if you want, at, at some level. So there is a dark side. We, we need to look at it and to analyze it and to see what, 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 we, what can we do. So. Uh, the automation of distribution of content, the automation of uh, uh, buying ads. Uh, there are nice things on paper, but there are also downsides. And we need, we, we need, we need to look uh, into those and to find solutions to not to, you know, uh, uh, create an ecosystem that is. So let me give another example. Uh, we have now in Romania networks that are coming from Eastern countries that are promoting fake advertising now. So, for example, different medicines or different products that are not even real. They are inventing websites, news websites about with doctors that are talking about, uh, I don't know what kind of pill or something. Those are things that are not ethical, of course, and there are things that 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 are uh, needs to be somehow uh, put under control. Or uh, we need to discuss about them and to see what's to be done. I think it's super interesting. I think there is also digital law, whatever you we should call. Like you know, the uh, Mariano has written a very interesting yeah. article about. We need to have uh, competent digital people to make the right questions, like the, 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 the dinosaurs talking yeah. to yeah. you know Mr. Zuckerberg. I mean, it's true. It's true. but that's that's something. But yeah. uh, there is there is a, so uh, I'm I want to be very clear. I'm not against Google. I'm not against Facebook. Yeah. But there are downsides, and there are uh, the innovation that uh, the global giants uh, um, uh, uh, did uh, somehow affect they they have also you know downsides okay. on the other hand um, we need to watch carefully we need to learn and we need to adjust and to adjust the strategies that we are having uh, and taking this into consideration not just to ignore it you know uh, also ad blocking is the, the another thing if uh, because of this competition because of the fact that it's very cheap to buy different ads local publishers try to compete and put a lot of placements and so on and so forth. Also, this is bad for the consumer. Also, this is bad for the whole environment. So it's very complex. But I'm saying that very often. We are uh, living now in the early stage of the digital environment and the internet. Let's not forget that. It's just like 20 years ago, internet was something very exotic. So 20 years is nothing if you compare it with any other industry. So we need to, to be realistic and to kind of say, okay, well, this 20 years now, 25, 30, if you're very generous, uh, there is still time to, to see what's not okay, to improve and hopefully uh, things will be uh, better and better in, uh, in the future, why not? Yeah. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. You're awesome. Bye.